What's up everyone? Welcome back to my channel. In last week's video, I shared with you three ways that you can boost your efforts in order to accelerate your growth on Instagram so that you can get to the 10K mark faster. Well, in today's video, I'm going to share a similar video on how you can boost your efforts, except this time it's gonna be all about how you can increase your likes and comments on your Instagram photos. So if you're interested in learning how you can boost your engagement, then keep on watching. Now, what I find is that a lot of people evaluate their performance on Instagram based on the followers that they have. Well, in my opinion, I personally believe that your engagement is probably far more important than your following count. And the reason for this is because in the Instagram space, there's just so many people who buy fake followers that nowadays brands and partners or whoever's interested in potentially working with you on social media, they're always going to be looking at how many comments you have, how many likes you have, and how many views you have on your videos that you post on Instagram in order to evaluate if you are actually real or not. But even then, in this day and age, people can still buy likes, comments, and views. However, However, the issue with this is that if you are stuck in a loophole of constantly investing in fake vanity metrics, you're going to be stuck in this vicious cycle of talking to no one. That's why I'm going to share with you my six tips on how you can boost your engagement organically, starting with tip number one, which is to make sure that your post is fully optimized. Now you might be wondering what exactly is a fully optimized photo? Well, I'm going to share my screen and give you an example of what I think a fully optimized photo looks like. Now we're looking at one of my photos right here. And the reason why this is fully optimized is because first of all, I am including a location. So I was at a cafe and this is where I took the picture of and I added the location so that people can find me faster if they were also looking for inspiration from this cafe. I've also tagged other accounts that are within my niche. And the reason for this is because if someone goes on their account and they look at their tagged photos, I might show up. The next thing is, is that I have a micro blog like caption or some sort of engaging caption that is very targeted to my niche or my target audience. And last but not least, I also have optimized my hashtags to fit my niche. Now, if you don't know any of these tips, make sure that you download my Instagram guide right here or you watch this video in order to really get the scoop on how to optimize your hashtags and how to make sure that you you are really ensuring that your posts are maximized and you're using all of Instagram tools to its fullest. The second tip that I have for you is very simple yet also very effective. And that is when you are writing captions, make sure that you are putting a call to action at the end so that you are incentivizing your audience to actually continue the conversation. For example, something that you could write at the end is saying, drop your favorite emoji if you agree. Or you could write something like, like this post if you agree or double tap if you agree. Or you could say something like, comment below, I'd love to hear your thoughts. You want to make sure that you are encouraging conversations to happen within your comment section so that you can increase your engagement. That also brings me to my third tip, which is to make sure that you are replying to all comments within at least the first 30 minutes of posting. The reason why you want to ensure that you are engaging back with your audience at least within the first 30 minutes is because in Instagram's algorithm, they determine the success of your post based on the first 30 minutes and the amount of engagement that you receive. So imagine if within the first 30 minutes you get 10 comments and you reply to each one, then that becomes 20 comments. So that's why you really want to make sure that when you are posting on Instagram that you're also going to be at your phone so that you can continue the conversation and respond back to your audience. And also aside from algorithm purposes, my rule of thumb is to just always bring value and engage back with your audience and actually make an effort to get to know the people who have really enjoyed your content so much so to leave a comment on your post. That's why in my opinion, regardless of the algorithm, this is a best practice that you need to do on Instagram if you want to succeed as a personal brand and if you want to succeed on social media. Now this brings me to my fourth tip and that is to understand when are the best post times for your account. Now, in order to understand when is the best post time for your account, you really want to dive into your Instagram analytics. So I'm going to share my screen and show you exactly how you do it. Now, what you want to do is you want to go to your insights and then you want to click on audience and within audience, you want to scroll down. And actually when you double tap, you're going to be able to see the amount of people that are actually on and at what hours of the day. You can also switch this to days and see which days of the week is best for you. And therefore by having this information, it's going to be a lot easier to make sure that your efforts are truly optimized and that you are posting at the times where people are going to be the most engaged because they are on Instagram. It does not make sense if your target audience is people who work nine to five and you're 
literally posting during the times where they're at the office and they are not looking at their phones. For me personally, I really like to post after work when I know my target audience is probably scrolling through the Instagram as they're commuting back home from the office or if they are just chilling at home after a long day of work, binging on Instagram content. That is my favorite time to post is when people are actually gonna be on their phones. And remember, weekend patterns are very different from weekday patterns. So make sure that you really understand human psychology and that you really fine tune your post times because this is really gonna help you boost your efforts in terms of getting more engagement and more reach on your posts. The fifth tip that I have for you is that right after you post your photo, video, or whatever piece of content that you have on Instagram, to make sure that you are also sharing it on your Instagram story. And the reason for that is because with Instagram stories, there is no algorithm. It is all chronological. So what you want to do is you at least want to tease your post on your Instagram story so that when people are going through stories, they'll see it right away. There is no algorithm. You're not going to be hidden and it'll encourage them to visit your profile or to tap that post and look at your photo, like it, and potentially comment it, especially if you followed my previous tips to encourage that behavior. So make sure whenever you post a new post that you at least shout it out in your Instagram story so that you can drive more traffic to your original content. Last but not least, my last tip that I have for you is that right after you post your content, wait a couple days and evaluate your performance. Now, what I mean by evaluating your performance is that you want to go on your post maybe a couple days after to ensure that your data is going to give you the best picture possible. You want to click view insights and then you want to scroll up so that you can actually see what exactly your post was able to generate in terms of follows and interaction. So if you look at this post right here, I've had 154 actions taken from this post and within those actions, 128 people visited my profile, 25 people visited my website, and then one person actually clicked on my email. But what I really want to know is how many people actually followed me from the result of having this photo up. Now what I see in this discovery is that about 52% of the people who found this post weren't following me at all and only three people converted into actual followers now for me I think this is awesome I'm really happy to have three people in my community however if you are seeing that your post generated all of these impressions, but zero people actually followed you back because of this post, then that's probably going to signal to you something. Maybe your content wasn't relevant, or maybe your hashtags were targeting the wrong people and that's why they didn't follow you back. Maybe your content could be improved. There's a lot of different reasons why someone might not be following you. However, it's really nice to actually see these impressions and look at this data to understand where you could optimize further. If your posts are generating follows or they're converting into traffic to other places in your Instagram account, then I would say that you're doing a pretty good job. However, if you're getting tons of traffic to that post but no actions are being taken, then you really wanna take a step back and evaluate what you can improve within your profile so that you can increase your engagement and increase the chances of people following you back. Now, if you need more help in figuring out what content is gonna stick best to your ideal audience, then make sure you click on this video because I'm gonna teach you just that. And after you finish watching this video, make sure you look at this video so that you can continue to improve your business, your life, and your social media. In the next video, I'm going to teach you or tell you the top mistakes that I see a lot of content creators making. So you definitely don't wanna miss that video because you might actually be making the mistakes that I'm gonna be mentioning. Anyways, guys, I hope you guys have a great day, a great week, and a great life, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.